Hey guys, it's been a while I did a video. Long back I talked about an Uber battery level example and finally I'm coming live but not for data science. Uh, something very special actually. Uh, guys, I know a few of you know I'm an electrical engineer. 2012 I graduated from NIT Varangal as an electrical engineer and since then uh, practiced it for around three years. It's been five years I left completely. But one recent event interviewed me a lot. Uh, Modi calling for switching off the lights uh, for nine minutes. And there were news that the grid might collapse. There were speculations. People came forward and explained. But guys, uh, kudos to the Indian power grid system. As an electrical engineer, I can tell you how challenging it's a problem. It's very challenging. The reason is simple. Electrical energy is neither stored, uh, it can only be transported. To be simple, the fan you are seeing, rotating, right? If you turn it on, uh, the production of energy should start at a coal plant or steam plant. If you turn it off, the production should stop. The energy which flows from the production to the consumption place should always be equal because there's no point where we can store. It's not a water tank, a water reservoir system. So now what happens if the entire nation turns off lights all of a sudden or if they turn on a light suddenly? For example, I'll tell you, if I turn on light or fan, could be for entire grid this is very small but if the entire block turns on if the entire apartment turns on if entire city city turns it on 2000 megawatts of consumption turns on or off at one point guys are you understanding it's, it's almost 10 20 percent and the grid can't handle it now i'll tell you uh, how the grid balances it have you ever wondered where this energy comes from like you turn it on the light goes on. You turn it off, light goes on. For example, an industry of one megawatt turns it on, light can, turns on, light turns off. So what is the reserve energy in the grid? Anyone? So it's the kinetic energy of the synchronous machines which are rotating. Whenever you turn on, don't think that the coal power plant guy has a sensor, he'll send more coal inside and it starts producing. No. The reservoir of the electric grid is the kinetic energy of the rotating synchronous machines. Over the entire grid, we have 30,000, 40,000 more machines rotating. And when you turn on, the machine ka kinetic energy comes down. That gets reflected in our frequency. The 50 hertz frequency comes to 49.9, not for a fan, but when it is huge. So, by the frequency is the measure we see the power balance, the consumption and the production, right? So, now what happens if the frequency falls down to 49, 48? So, if you turn it on more and more devices, the more and more energy being consumed and if the coal plant or steam plant guy doesn't supply the energy and increase the production, the frequency down to 48, 45, all your ACs, fridges, everything are gone. A complete collapse of the grid. Frequency can never come below 49.5. Right? Now, the entire nation, within a single minute, turns off the entire light, 20%. If people don't balance it real time, man, that's gonna be a real disaster for the country and i really salute the power grid corporation or the transmission guys the entire electrical utility first time in my life i felt proud i'm an electrical engineer and i'm telling you it's no mean feat even the u.s guys u.s guys are the most powerful grids even the germany germany when the solar eclipse comes they shiver when the grid collapses but we were resilient for it. It is no mean feat of the electrical engineers. And synchronous machines, they change the world. And I, five years later, without even Googling, 
without even referring textbooks i could recollect all recollect all these concepts the reason is simple learn with heart don't learn by heart learn with your heart you'll remember the concepts forever thank you